Finally, I want to talk a little bit about tracking. That was the last part of your reflection assignment. So there were two classroom or two districts, I said, where District X was tracked. So that means that, you know, in like elementary and middle school, kids were often in groups. Maybe you had the Red Robins and the Blue Jays, and they might be different groups for, say, math or science uh, or social studies or reading. And then later they would take different classes, starting maybe middle or high school, they might be in, say, advanced math versus regular math or something like that. Now, in most districts that do tracking, kids are regularly assessed. It, it would be possible that a kid could switch tracks um, at, at different points, maybe each year or something like that. However, in reality, they rarely end up switching tracks. And one of the reasons for this is that kids are experiencing different curricula. To, when we have different tracks, often what happens is that the kids in the uh, high track get a more rich and engaging curricula, curriculum than the ones in the um, typical or low tracks, and therefore it's not likely that a kid is going to suddenly jump up to the, the level of, of mathematical work that's in the higher track. This is really pretty common in the U.S. Most districts in the U.S. have some form of tracking or another, and we can see it uh, either in these small groups or in the specific classes students take. Then the other district I asked you to think about was a D-track district, where as much as possible we keep kids together. This doesn't mean they never break off and work on maybe specific skills that they need to work on, but they're not sort of globally placed into a low or high math group or something like that. And therefore, kids are working on essentially the same underlying curriculum. They have access to the same mathematics that they can work on and grow on. All right, so what do we know a little bit in terms of intuition and research on this topic? For a lot of people's intuition, it tells them that tracking is better for a variety of reason, reasons. Um, but again, here we see that research shows a D-track classroom is much more effective. So one thought is, you know, teaching is, we want the teach to, teaching to match kids' needs, right? The kids are different, so they have to get a different kind of teaching, so the kids are going to learn more when we track them. In fact, what we see is that they don't learn more. Any educational benefits when we compare schools are very minor or, or non-existent, but the gaps do get bigger. Um, we also see that all kids benefit from a challenging curriculum, and so when you give just the kids in the high track this rich, engaging curriculum, what you're doing is you're removing that opportunity from kids in the other tracks, and that's really damaging to them. There's this concern that, look, we have these high kids, they're really good at math, and they're going to be bored or not challenged or left behind in a typical classroom. We have really well research-based uh, techniques that come from classrooms, observing really effective classrooms and studying that, that show us how to do effective math teaching that really challenges all the kids in the classroom. And um, this is a part of making math more rich and dynamic and drawing on a large range of strengths. And related to this is the idea that everyone loses out when we track. So if I put all the high kids together, maybe they, they're more likely to have a similar strategies in mathematics. They're going to miss out on strategies from other kids and vice versa. And so everyone is losing something when we separate kids out in this way. In, inherent in this approach is the idea that we can identify who the high and low kids are. And we can somehow do that accurately and fairly. Um, but in reality, what we see is that we disproportionately under-identify poor, black, and Latina, Latino, Latinx students. And so therefore, what we have in practice is a classist and racist um, policy or practice because it's disproportionately harming some students based on their background versus others. And then finally, there's this view that people are just better, some people are just better at math than others. And we really want to problematize that, and we've been able to problem problematize that by looking at really uh, high-quality classrooms. It is true that if my class, in my class, being good at math is about doing it fast and getting all your computations correct quickly, I will have some kids who are better than that than others, and I'll be able to differentiate them or distinguish them. But if we think about what math really involves, which is computing, representing, explaining, questioning, connecting things to the real world, um, connecting ideas to each other, then it's really difficult for one student to sort of shine uniformly across that. Instead, what we're going to see is that different kids have strengths at different times. Um, and the more I know about my kids and can bring in those strengths into the math curriculum, the more we can see that different people can be strong at different times in the math, math classroom.